Hey, my name my name's Steve Bear. I'm a pro skateboarder, and I also am part owner of The Barracks uh, with Eric Costin. And uh, I've been skateboarding for 25 years, and I've been, uh, I've actually never done drugs or drank alcohol or smoked cigarettes in my whole life. I was real focused, like I want to be a pro skateboarder. Here I am, I'm super poor. Um, my parents split up. It was even rougher on my mom and I. I'm like, okay, this is really kind of my only shot. I'm gonna give it all I got, you know, because I'm like, I have to work really hard at something, mm -hmm. and so something like partying just didn't really seem to. It just seemed disingenuous to me. All the time, I get pressured all the time to. I mean, now you know, I'm 38 now, so it's like. You know, people don't pressure me as much, but when I was younger and all the tours that I went on and all the people that I know, I was like, I want to be the first person to get you wasted. I want to be there when you're wasted. Man, you're so funny or crazy or whatever when you're sober. I can't, I would love to see you wasted. Like, I wouldn't, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, there's a lot of pressure out there. I mean, in, in the culture, I think even in the skateboard culture, there's a lot of pressure. Um... The standards of the magazines and stuff have definitely lowered in the sense that they've catered to that like party culture, which I, I never necessarily agreed with, um, because it's already out there anyway. I, I feel like the, the, the icons and the heroes of skateboarding don't need uh, platforms to push something that's already um, a tough enough sort of time of life for uh, a young person. You know, we don't need to make we don't need to make it a virtue because it's really not. I and mean, some people come out, you know, and, and they're fine, like extraordinarily, you know, talented or resilient individuals. But yeah. for the more the majority of people that and and unfortunately that's what you hear the stories of the guys that have like gone through this really deep dark period and then came out of it. But they're these insanely resilient and talented people, where. You know, unfortunately, the majority of the people that are influenced by those people don't have that same kind of resilience, and it ends up being, you know, this downward spiral that they can never kind of get out of. The decision to not be a partier or do drugs or drink or anything was going to, like, affect my life as I got older in a way more positive way than it was going to the people who decided to, like, really be, like, you know, I've, I, they, they, people wake up 10 years later and they don't know where their 20s went. And then they're 30 and they have really bad skin and wrinkles under their eyes and, 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 and they're living in the same apartment that they lived in 10 years prior where they had dreams and goals and things that they wanted to accomplish. But going out became a lot um, more important or easier than, than trying to confront the fact that accomplishing those goals and dreams are, are pretty fucking hard. I don't really think the trajectory of like my life would have been the same had I been like a, a party monster. I, I, I don't think I would have, well one, the amount of things that I've been able to do and create never would have happened if I would have like spent my time going to parties because really there's a party there's a party every night always there's always a party everyone you know there's always someone partying and you can always find the address you know and if I would have if I would have like taken up all the times that I was actually invited to a party if I would have taken up people on their offers I would probably have accomplished maybe a quarter of what I've accomplished in my life you know, and to me, I always wanted so much more. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's just my, my, I'm an egomaniac or maybe I'm greedy or maybe I believe way too much in myself, but I, I just am not satisfied and never have been with being just a pro skateboarder. And I definitely didn't want my life to be defined by being a pro skateboarder and having the most interesting thing in my life happen when I was 19 years old. 
you know. So I like you know those poor guys that for me like they go they fly to the moon, you know, when they're in their twenties, and then they have to talk about it for the next fifty years, <laughs> you know. And I just didn't want that to happen. I I always thought that like you know. I wanted my life to be when skateboarding was over. I kind of always prepared for the time when skateboarding would end that I would be just as successful as as whatever I would do next as I was a skateboarder so that my life wouldn't be defined by something I did you know, when I was young. You know, fortunately, and I think the reason why I've been able to be pro for 20 years now and that I don't look like an old man is that I didn't party. You know, and and it's kept me and my body strong enough to stay relevant all this time, and to um, you know also use my time to focus on other things so that I can be su more successful when I'm done. So I mean, look, what you, <laughs> yeah, one life and one chance, and maybe I'm too greedy, but I'd like to use it um, accomplishing the most. I can accomplish. And for someone who I don't believe is really, has like God-given talents, that's what I gotta do. One life, one chance.